Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today. Uh, my name's Dave, Scott's recording, and we're gonna do cook a curry today. And this curry is amazing. It's a traditional Indian curry. We take it on the road with us whenever we go camping. So we're gonna do it today though on a Dutch pot. So it's gonna be a bit different. Um, bit how we would take it, cook it when we go camping. So yeah, let's get rolling. So guys, didn't mention this but this you can actually make this at home as well and you know by all means you don't have to take it camping with you it's just a, an amazing all-round you know uh, curry for anybody who just wants something simple but very very tasty so let's get to the ingredients seven cloves of garlic um, I like a lot of chilies so <laughs> we've got quite a bit of chilies here ten chilies a nice chunk of ginger and three onions and we've got here salt garam masala now this you can buy anywhere by all means any shops Tesco you know your major supermarkets um, peel tin tomatoes because I don't like fresh tomatoes and they, they go down very quickly so yeah and turmeric again you can get turmeric anywhere these days now ghee clarified butter uh, you don't have to use this if you don't want to uh, you can use all olive oil or just normal butter will do unsalted uh, i prefer that because it's you know more clarified and it ta it does taste a bit different but not much and meat so over here we've got um We've got a kilo worth of meat. Um, yeah, so that we had that frozen and I had it in the back, so I defrosted it, ready to go. Because every now and then you don't, you just feel like a curry. So there's a couple of variations of this that I'd like to tell you about, right? And um, I've cooked this so many times, right? So, you know, there's variations of it that I've liked. There's variations that I haven't liked. Ingredients that I've put in, you know, spices, herbs. And the best tool that I've, you know, probably come up with, right, are the ones you cook it down with water, you know, fill the top with water and let it bubble down, simmer down. And that creates a nice, slightly moist, taste um, not you know not too wet and um, not too dry and that's you know that's really really nice that is but then there's also another option that I tried and that was with um, creme fraiche now I've got some creme fraiche uh, not on the table here yeah and uh, I've got that actually ready in fridge and I'm going to show you both versions because some people like their curries creamy and creme fraiche gives that amazing creamy taste without killing all the spices and herbs you know um, it's just an just amazing all round added uh, an addition if you like a creamy curry you know as to a dry curry so yeah right so I'm just roughly chopping this you don't have to you know get it down to a T where it's nice and thin and that it's just you don't want the admin when you're camping you know and plus some people sweat their onions and then they add things later on now we're not doing none of that this is going to be nice and simple and you know it's going to be less admin as well especially when you're camping and you've had a hard day of doing what you do when you go camping climbing you know whatever you do and um, yeah but Again, the same way I'd do the same thing that I would be as I would cook at home. I'd do the same thing. So, you know, by all means, don't give yourself extra admin when you don't need to. So, it's not a big Dutch pot, as you can see. You know, it's quite a small one. Take a little look. Uh, inside, I've oiled it. Um, it makes a big difference when you're cooking in this when you've oiled it. it you know acts as a non-sticking agent um, I have cooked both ways and everything sticks to the pan like hell if you don't oil it so yeah remember to oil it prior cooking 
and even after you've washed it as well because you know just to look after your stuff um, we've got the coals going there and you know when the coals go nice and white that's when we should get the Dutch pot on and we'll get the food on right okay so boneless skinless thighs great absolutely great for cooking this food this uh, dish uh, because you know there's decent amount of fat on there these you know no bones having to mess around you just literally touch this all this meat up make sure there's no little debris of bone because um, you do get quite a bit of debris on bone when you cook when you get in this these type of cut and uh, you just it's just not nice getting a bit of bone in your mouth um, I'm cutting these quite big as you can see so when you cut when you cook this dish um, the meat is nice and you know quite chunky when you're eating it rather as to it'll fall to bits if you cut it too small I mean don't get me wrong you can I have done both ways cut this you know quite into small pieces and what I've noticed is it cooks really fast and the meat tends to you know shred uh, it's okay it's not bad it's but it's this is the best way I've found to cook to cook it have some nice chunky pieces uh, yeah right okay so that's been on for a few minutes now so let's get some butter in there you know whatever you'd use oil if you want to a nice big tablespoon so now we know that's ready as you've got the sizzle Right, okay, time to get the ingredients in. As you can see, I've got some water there so the onions don't stick. Really important that is. So we've got the onions to a nice brown and just so we don't burn them, adding a nice bit of water. And at this point we're going to add some tomatoes. So I've got chunks here. Three there. Mm. 
These are plumbed. Better to use chopped, nice and easier. But you work with what you've got. Give that about five minutes to simmer down. So it's nice and smooth. You can see the consistency. Everything's nice and reduced. Nice and cooked. So at this point, we're going to put spices, salt, herbs in. And the reason why I've taken it off is because we don't want to burn the spices and you know we want to just keep it nice and let the warmth cook through the spices salt to taste This garam masala, obviously you can do that to taste as well. It's always best to put in a little bit rather than a lot. That's one table. Get some water in there, just a tiny bit. And this is going to activate all the dried spices. The colour, not too dark. So I put in another tablespoon. Be careful with this because if you put too much in, it will overpower the taste. Bit more water. So we've got a nice paste here for the chicken. Wow, if you could smell this guys. Amazing. So we'll let the spices activate for a couple of minutes. We'll get this back on, get a bit more water in and then get the chicken in. So, the spices now have been activated. If you keep it on a high heat, it will burn your spices and you'll literally ruin your dish. So, just a couple of minutes, just to let everything slowly nice and, you know, mold together. And that's what you want, a nice paste. Get the lid back on. Get this back on fire. And then we'll add the chicken. Now I would leave this on just so we can get a bit of a bubble. So what we could do is literally flash, flash fry the chicken in this flavor, get it all nice and mixed. And then what we'll do, we'll take a few coals off so it cooks nice and slow rather than burning everything. Right, so that's been on for a, a couple of minutes. Um, the lid's been on deliberately to get the um, heat going so we can get the chicken cooked. Chicken down. That's nice and hot, bubbling. Now the 
one thing I did was leave the turmeric to last. Let's be careful when you put turmeric in because when you've ever been out on a curry night and had yellow fingers the next day it's because there's been too much turmeric in your food. Trust me, you'd, it's just for, it's very minimal flavouring. So it's more for uh, colour. So literally one teaspoon. Right, let's give this a stir. So mix all the paste into the chicken, get it in, make sure it all binds together. Put the lid on and let this literally simmer for a couple of minutes so all the rawness is gone and then we'll put some add some water in and then we can just leave it to simmer and let it do its magic so as you can see I'm going to show you something now we put quite a bit of coals on there to get the fire to get the pot quite raging and the reason being that is because we want the chicken um, to be cooked as you can see so all the rawness has gone out of the meat so what I'm going to do now wow if you could smell these flavours that nice dark colour amazing so now what we're going to do we're going to fill it with water just cover the top and we're going to take quite a few coals out just so it simmers nice and low thing is with this chicken is the best to cook it slow low and slow that's the best result for this so yeah let's get some water in there don't worry about the top of the meat because <coughs> If we put a couple of coals on the top of the lid, that'll cook through from the top to the bottom. Always add more coals on if you think the heat's not enough. So we'll go with about five bricks there, that should be enough. Plus all the heat around as well, that's going to give it quite a bit of heat from the sides. Right, so hard part's done now. We just have to let it cook and yeah, that's it. Right, okay guys, so we've been letting this stew for about 40 minutes. And the most important thing to remember when you're cooking on a Dutch pot is trying to maintain your heat correctly because Sometimes you can overcook it and sometimes Well, you can't undercook it, but it'll just literally take forever to cook it if you don't get the right amount of coals going 
so we as you can see here we've got a really nice bed of coals here nice and white and um, we did use um, you know a, a sack I think it was about a two kg sack of coals we used the whole thing um, just so we could get the right amount of heat distributed to the um, pot uh, as you can see here you know if we want to add some more in we can but at the moment we've got a nice consistency going here so let me just show you now so we've come to 40 minute point so what we'll do now we'll take this off and let it simmer down and that's what you want a nice good bubble If I could tell you what this smells like guys, honestly, your mouth will be watering, it's amazing. So yeah, let's leave this off now for about 30 to 40 minutes, just depending on, you know, obviously the heat, like I said, we want the end result, we want a nice um, pasty taste, uh, texture, um, you know, we don't want it too watery because if you get if you, if you reduce the water as much as you can you can always add creme fraiche as I was saying earlier on if you want it creamy so yeah let's leave this off for 40 minutes see what happens right okay so as you can see we've got three hungry little monsters here waiting for the final product and this is the consistency what we want very little juice in there oil and um, you know at this point what I would normally do if I wanted to cr add creme fraiche I'd cook it at just a little bit more further so there's not l there's not as much juice if I wanted to add creme fraiche for that creamy taste but for me and the children you know this is you know we're happy with this um, by all means you can cook this to how you want it and this is how we feel like eating it today so you know it's got a bit of juice to it and we don't want fancy that creamy taste today as you can see all around here all the coals that we put in today are pretty much gone so we've you know pretty much used three quarters of a bag of coals today uh, they're just shop bought coals supermarket bought coals um, not the best they're okay they were they served their purpose um so yeah now just to finish this dish off i've chopped some coriander there uh, cilantro and finish this dish off you don't have to cook this in you can just mix it in and that'll be good enough and you can literally just serve it straight away with this mixed in I love coriander some people don't love coriander cilantro um, you know by all means add as much as you want or if you don't want if you don't like it don't add any but yeah juicy soft and tender I guarantee you if you cook this whether you're cooking it inside your house or camping on a camping trip you will absolutely love it um, <clears throat> just before we finish up I will say if you do take this this dish on a camping trip try and prep everything in tubs before you actually you know get to you know get into the camp and cook this because it, it will save some major admin on time of cooking you know prepping and stuff but uh, I hope you really enjoyed this and a thumbs up and a like all right kids what do you think like and subscribe yeah. subscribe like and subscribe <laughs> both can I try some now
Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.